So we've had at this point your two uh, your two sessions, your two phases is what I what we call them the first one with the cha the chakra um healing clearing grounding and infusion and then after a couple days we had your infinite love light total body healing and clearing and that was on Sunday that was Easter we did it at night you're eight o'clock in, in the evening and today so to, and today's Wednesday so we've had Monday Tuesday and now today's the third day since you're since you're healing since we since i left you there so tell me how you've been feeling and like what your experience was there and and all of that yeah <laughs> um so the first one um was probably not so different to things i've experienced before like like uh, you know, like it was uh, clearing the chakras and mm -hmm. and it sort of felt a bit familiar. Good. Um, That's yeah. good. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's good. The second one was like so different from anything I've experienced. So that's probably, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I just know as I was experiencing it, I, w I actually just had all these questions to you, you know, like what's that's really happening? do this. <laughs> Yeah. That's why we do this because yeah. we need to wrap it up for sure. Yeah. 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 So I'm glad that I, it, every time, and I hear this every time and every time it just, because it's like that for me too, you know, I'm in it with you and it's, it's mm. a whole mind blowing experience for me too, every single time, but everybody's experience is so personal and different. And, and it's really, yeah. like when I say, I could tell you all about it, but if you don't know it until you're there, until you're, until you've experienced it, then you're like, oh, now I get what she was talking about. <laughs> Did you have yeah. that experience? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, you know, like I just got, I'm kind of the curious person, so I was like, yeah. what's going on now? What's going on now? <laughs> like, I, I actually had all these questions, but yeah. um, that's yeah. why I did that with me now. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, go just, however, I like to kind of let, let my, my client dictate how this goes because yeah. it, it's your experience. So whatever, however you want it to come up or talk about it, I just, I let, at some point I will ask you specific questions most likely just so we can uh, have a better understanding, but I like it to just you to be in the driver's seat when it comes to this. Yeah, no, I really like felt that you were able to diagnose a lot of things that that's going on in my body. So that's like, yeah. So one thing we talked about uh, are the legs, right, which feels a bit heavy and yeah, hard for me to walk and stuff. So I mean, yeah, it's like it's not that I can't walk, you know, no. like it's just, it's just that I I I eat more than five kilometers. It's I haven't really been pushing it, so I'm curious to like see if it's changed. Mm -hmm. Does it feel, yeah. your, does your body feel different since we did this second, the second Yeah, one? Um, but it's also a bit, like you said, so still extremely sensitive. Um, yeah. 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 That's um, why I say like as much like space as you can give your body and everything to acclimate to that because you don't know what your baseline neutral is because it's had all this stuff on top of it and when we literally take that all away you're like what what <laughs> everybody's body is like um you know super sensitive emotionally physically energetically it's just because you feel so much there isn't all that gunky stuff to buffer it anymore so yeah hey, like you're really gonna know what's yours and what's other people's and what's around you i'm not yeah. messing around there i mean it you know it's it's the truth yeah and it's not that like you know it's been like this before that i am very sensitive but now it's just like ah <laughs> so I think my oh, you say sensitive. Tell me exactly, like, what do you what are you talking about with that? Because sensitivity can mean different things to different people. Um, I think sensitive to other people's feelings and emotions. Yeah, that I take them in. So right, yeah, right, right. Which is yeah. we diagnosed number one was this is uh, like your big thing. I'm not gonna say I don't want to say problem because it's not a problem. It's it's an ability. It's a superhuman power that we need to see and look at. I mean, 
look mm -hmm. at what I do. I you know what I mean. Look at how I was in bed for 40 years because of my sensitivities to other people and how I could pick up on them. And yeah. I had, I, all of that changed and I had to see it as no, it's a, it's an ability. It's just like, you know, Superman can't go willy nilly through stuff or he'll destroy stuff. He has to, you know, know his power and it's about knowing your power and how to use it. And sometimes our powers make us really sensitive because you know, there's two sides, yeah, to yeah, yeah. Yeah. two sides to that coin, you know, and there's give and take to everything. And so the more, you know, superhuman powers you have, the more responsibility do you have, not only to the world at large, but to yourself to honor those abilities and make hmm. them work for you. So I never look at that as any kind of detriment. I know that in a lot of circles, it's like, oh, you're an empath. How sad for you. You know, you poor little oh, stuff, no. baby. You know what I mean? A lot of people kind of see it that way. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's the total wrong message to send yourself. It's about, it's about understanding what that is for you in any given moment because as you know energy makes a change and you're gonna feel so it's about like creating a whole understanding of what's you and then creating this this um energetic once you know what's you it's so much easier to identify other people you know what i mean like yep. it's so much easier because before that you're just like i'm tired and i mean you could be like oh there's other people around but you don't really get it like you don't get it get it and then once you do you're like okay now i can now i know if if i allow a siphoning a pulling a depleting of me by this person or this person or this person to the detriment of me that's on me you know what I mean? Like that, that's truly more than in any other. I mean, that's something I think that everybody kind of goes, well, if somebody treats me a certain way then I'm allowing it, you know, but this is on a different level. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is about energy. So, so it kind of puts you in a, in a situation where you really have to, um, take some time to get the barometer back to a new normal. It's like a new normal of what you're dealing with with your body. But the good part of that is, is if you regulate that, like the whole point of all this is like, we get all that stuff out so you know you, and that way, all the different energetic connections are heightened so you're able to manage your particular system and how to be in your, I see, I see it like a full on, you know, dynamic, molecular, biological organism that is like this supercomputer, and we're and and spaceship, and um, and we have to get into that spaceship and understand all the controls and all of the the different alarms and all of the you know what i'm talking about like it's so it's that's what it's that's like it's it becomes like that needs to be like what it's about because mm. yeah but it's also like you know it's also like okay now <laughs> now i mean feeling even more sensitive so now i like really have to you know like the yoga and meditation and everything that I did before, I think I like, it's almost that I'm really dependent on that. You know, like I, I almost can't skip a day or, you know, it, it becomes very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Absolutely. So, um, so the things that I'm just going to tell you right now, because we're here. So the things that will help you with that, like when we are in the, um, when we're in the healing, like I said, just, I know, you know, you're, you're pretty good with drinking water, but you're just going to please try to drink even more. Um, just because that will help your body a lot to regulate and, and in just in so many ways, water is just so amazing. And if you can put like, I, I'm not sure, oh, I have orange juice right now, but like if you have any like mint or sage or any type of herbs that you particularly like to put like fresh mint, like this is my water here. <laughs> it's not the freshest mint from last night, <laughs> but I put mint in my water all the time and that really helps a lot too. But what, especially right now, like for the next week, it's about a week 
but it lingers. It's a transmutation of energy. So it's this whole shifting that happened with you. And so it takes about, it's especially raw the first few days. And then it starts to get a little bit easier. And then by about week two, you're into like, okay, this is feeling a lot more comfortable and and all of that so just know that this is not a state of being yeah. for forever it's just because it just happened you know what i mean it just happened so yeah because the first day i was actually you know i spent the time alone but yesterday i was because of corona we we're homeschooling so yeah. i was back, yeah. back in business as a homeschooling mom um yeah. and i was like no if you don't want to do this i have to leave <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. So good 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 because i'm like you know what with homeschool you can miss a day nobody's gonna be you know what oh, i mean yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's more important to take care of you and i knew that but i was like she's just gonna have to figure it out because there's never yeah. gonna be a time when you're not gonna be a mom and have children to deal with you know what i mean like and sooner's better than later don't you agree yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah that's good and um yeah, yeah. today things are better good. already Oh, that's good, good for you. Good for you. So I was going to ask you, so aside from the sensitivities, um, yeah. you know, which we, you know, we, we knew, oh, I was going to say, um, so water, drinking a lot of water and also um, taking baths. So as you talked about like your meditation, your yoga and stuff, but actually taking baths and being in the bathtub and meditating in the bathtub. Um, and even maybe uh, if you had, I, I sent you your, your recordings. Did you get them? Yeah, I haven't looked at them yet, but I got them. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, I was like, I could just use Dropbox. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. Um, I was more like caught up with the whole, like, I was dealing with the space thing on my computer. This has been going on for a bit. I've been trying to deal with it. It's just kind of, but anyway, um, so you could, whenever that comes around, and what's really cool about the, um, having the recording is that you, I mean, you, let's say in the future, okay, let's say like in two months or whatever, you start to feel kind of run down and tired again, you know, because this is a maintenance thing. I wish it was a forever thing. I truly do. I do with all my heart. I wish it was a forever thing, but it's a, it's about a maintenance thing. And that has to do with you and how you live and what you, you know, how you practice your life and all that good stuff. But the cool thing is, is that um, before you would say like, oh, infinity, I need to schedule another appointment with you. It would be, I would always direct you, have you listened to your recording? Have you gone back mm -hmm. and done that? Because if you do that, just listening to it, and especially if you listen to it like in the bathtub or do any meditation in the bathtub, it, it's its own, like when you're in, um, when you're in water, it's, it's a conductor and it's also a buffer and it's crystal and you're crystal and it's like and when you're in the in whatever bathroom bath you know you have it's usually private it's you know you're naked you're alone it's private it's a it's like a portal very different than any other place that you can go to you know except for maybe a water some place outside that's private you know this is like the this is the thing that's that's where it's at so i really recommend going there as much as you can and um at least for a half an hour if not longer you know um that'll really help and um so both of those things involving water, drinking water, being in water, and meditating, and then, uh, or just playing music, you know, it doesn't have to, you know, whatever feels good for you, or just being in silence, whatever, you know, feels really good for you, just kind of going over your body and, and the different, you know, the different places that we touched on, and I mean, we hit everything, as you know, but, um, but that, you know, that's good too, to kind of help integrate you know everything because it is kind of a mind twist and um so on that note um and if anything else comes up you know for me to tell you i will so this is also why we do this because as we talk about this stuff and you have questions or whatever i will get information to be able to clear things up for, for you <clears throat> so feel free to ask yeah yeah feel free to ask anything yeah. so so go ahead yeah so the, the heart chakra yeah, the heart chakra, I feel we need to go back to because that was probably the the most 
Sure. You know, yeah. Um, and um, you said something about that there were some people that had passed that were attached to me. Yeah. And I think you tried to remove it and it really was painful. So I don't know what happened. Mm. It really felt, yeah. That's usually resistance. That's, that's your, that's like, it's, it, there's a, um, that's why I'm always like saying now breathe through this and, you know, release. And because the body mm. tends to get used to certain energies and especially if you're emotionally connected, then, uh, like, do you know who that is? Is it like, so I don't know so many men that's passed away, actually. Um, I know my grandfather, like 18 years ago, um, and my uncle, two years ago. These are the people I kind of, that I had a closer relationship to. Okay. Um, so my grandfather, I think, so they're both have in common that they're a little bit strange, maybe. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I can um, relate to strange. <laughs> <laughs> but in that, but like lovable, but strange. Yeah. Um, uh, so with my grandfather, um, he was, I don't know, you know, like he, he always acted like I was a very little child, but then, you know, I grew up and he still acted like that. Aww. But I sort of always played along, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah, they probably, he probably likes, would have liked me quite. Like if he, if he didn't leave, he probably would have liked to stay with me. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, I definitely felt that it, I, I was feeling older person. It didn't feel like you're, I was like, this is not like our father. That's for sure. And I was like, I was, I don't know. Uncle kind of slipped. It was, it really felt, but see, I don't like, unless there's, and we weren't doing a mediumship thing. <laughs> so I do mediumship. Um, but that, I'm not gonna, I can't ignore it because that's what was coming up and it wasn't like, it, it wasn't, it was in a very, and I've got to tell you, I haven't had that happen before. So it was like, it, it was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. And I just, I, I, I very much, the way that I do my healings, it's like, I'm there, but I'm also sharing space with your, your team that is talking to me and telling me what what I need to know and what you need to know to do what we're doing. You know what I mean? But it's not like, it's not just 100% me, you know? It's like, I never know. I know to a certain degree, like I know the, the points in the road, A, B, C, D, E, of how, how I've been taught to do these healings, which is, solely by dealing with my guides on the other side and getting to uh, uh, a formula, if you will. <laughs> and, um, but for everybody, it's so different because everybody is different. So when we get in there, it's like, we go with what, with what we see and what I get and what I'm shown and, and, and that's, that's it, you know, and as much information as I guess we both needed that at that time. So it was on one hand, very specific on the other hand, very foggy because it was like certain details are not necessary. That's not what we're here for, you know, kind of thing. It was more mm -hmm. like, it was more like we have these energies and your heart chakra wasn't just that one. It was just in general, just with people, you know, either alive or not, you know, that they have these tethers to you. And, and there was a, and there was a lot of it. And even from the past stuff. And like I said, that was like the first thing I said to you was something about, um, like you think, or you worry a lot about people or you're, you know, there's a lot and you were like, yeah, like it was just, it's just a thing. Like I said, like we were talking about, it's just your, and it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's just, it's, literally your heart shot. And like I said, when we were, I think I said something about like, I can see why your heart, your heart energy, your energy is so, um, what did I say? Something like juicy or something. I was like, it's so nice. And it, I can see why people want to attach to you and not I like, oh. it's sticky, it's sticky. 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 Yeah. It's sticky. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I want to stick to it. And it feels really, and I didn't mean it in a bad, it's like, Oh, I can see why, you know, people want to be here oh, no. and not no. want to 
believe because you just have that type of energy. You're very comforting. You're very loving. You're very thoughtful and understanding. You're all of those things that people love, but people, but whether it's intentional or not, it tends to, there's just so much, like I just kept thinking, seeing and feeling there's just a lot of it. I think I said there's a lot, like a lot of times because it just kept kind of, we take stuff off and there would be more and we take stuff off and there would be more. Did it feel like that to you? Um, yeah, it, it just really felt heavy. And especially when you started to talk about this person or whoever it was that had yeah. passed. Yeah. Um, and I, how did you feel that went? Cause I wasn't sure what happened in there. And I really felt it like the whole night as like a sort of heavy thing. Yeah. Well, the thing is with the heart chakra, it's like the one that we feel the most like discomfort or pain in either when yeah. it's opening up or we're transmuting energy from it because it's, it's, it is our strongest um, energetic chakra of all of them. And so, um, so it will feel the most like I've had a heart. I've, I went to the emergency room before when my heart chakra was opening and I had no idea what was going on. There was nothing physically wrong with me. It was all energy. Um, but, and I've felt that many times and I know exactly what you're talking about because it is so, it, 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 it just radiates out. Just, there's just so much going on there. And especially we don't just take, we don't just, we're not just taking away, but we're also infusing with the love light energy there, um, at the end. And so that's really, really powerful too. But so the idea there is of course, is to balance that out. We're taking out and we're cutting off as much energetic attachments. That's been, that's, I see them as like, they're like tubular, and, and they're like gray matter and, um, like little black holes, like just yep. this kind of, and just pulling, pulling, pulling. And mm -hmm. as odd as that is, you know, the energetic body, the physical body gets, you know, used to it to a degree. And so when we shift those energies, we really feel it. So, so, but do you feel that? because i wasn't sure after feeling so much like after so do you feel you managed to like detach um the um, the person that had passed or what we did what i felt was it was about that that was more of a and if you go back and listen to it it was about yeah. creating, it was about because you can't really detach something like that that's a soul connection you know okay what I mean? yeah so you're always going to have that soul connection. It was about creating space. So if you go back and listen to it, we're talking about like, we were just pushing back, back, back. We're just creating okay. space, creating. That's what yep. we said. So you're going to have that attachment. There could be this kind of period of grief about it because it's not there. And um, if that's what you want to call it, you know, but that can be pulled in at any time. You know what I mean? It, that's up to you. Whereas the way that I saw it was, it was like, he was like right up in here. You know what I mean? Kind of really attached to like, 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 and this is not just about you. This is about him too. Like, like, like if you said, if he's going to stick around and there's going to be somebody he's going to, you know, attach to, it would be, it would be you because. Yeah, I'm, but I'm more also, like I said, my grandfather, but I'm thinking probably more of my uncle. Um, uh, who Maybe passed away it's only two years ago he passed away actually um that's pretty near and it could yeah. be and like i said it was just um it there wasn't a whole lot of detail about it i i no. felt i felt a lot of people but it was it did feel like there was definitely one more than others and um so but that's definitely for for you to say and we can definitely dive deeper into that if you want to with this you know with a session specific about that if you wanted to do that um but the advice here with that would be to um create if you if you, only you like like i can help you with that definitely we can have a we can have a session about that but but that's, that's your soul connection. You know what I mean? So there's a good chance that you're, that you can, um, very much work on that for your, you know, for yourself as well. You know, do, does that make sense? As far as, as far as 
because here's the problem with with what that was was doing was it was just too it was it's literally like somebody up on you all the time it's just too much like you need your you need your energetic space and it was almost like well let me see what like let me see out of your perception kind of thing like he's almost like so up on you that he's like here not here i guess is the best way to put it like it's just it's just like okay you're you need to create space and he it's not like he's <clears throat> confused confused it's just kind of like he found a, a comfortable space to be and and you know that's it but that's not comfortable for you it's too it's too much and um that's what i really saw there so to answer your question it's kind of like yeah we created a lot of space like i just i wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna like nothing gets past me kind of thing <laughs> Um, I can eradicate like cancer energy going through the process that we do, but soul energy attachments, that's like, that's a different thing. We can do cord cutting. That's a whole other specific thing about cut, but that's when you have to be in full agreement and go through this whole thing. Like, yeah, I want, I want a, a, a what's it called? A it's, it's all either cord cutting. I like to call it relationship detachment. And you can do that for people that are incarnate or otherwise. And <clears throat> I have a whole section on my, on my, um, on my website about it. So if you want to read about it, you can, because, because it's, and it's also a practice that you can try to do by yourself too. And I encourage people to try that. And I'm going to, I keep meaning to do it but there are a lot of guided meditations online you can just look up cord cutting and it's about it it's about basically the way that it works is if you think about your energetic cords with people so your husband your children your friends your family anybody that you're and anybody that you meet and you have any kind of connection with it could be 5 minutes there's an energetic attachment happening there and a lot of them just break off because there isn't much going on there and but if there's like a a, a real traumatic event even with a total stranger there's an energetic attachment there because you're both kind of feeding this energy so if you have these energetic attachments with people um, you know, within relationships and all of these different ways that you can. And basically what can happen is you can be doing whatever in your life and so-and-so thinks about you and starts talking about you or thinking or reminiscing or even, um, dreaming about you or, or having a self-gratifying sexual session with themselves about you um, and doing different things. And all of a sudden that rings your energetic phone. You'll start thinking about people and situations. You're like, where did that come from? That's because they're like calling you up energetically. You're completely, because you're still attached and people, they could, souls can do that on the other side as well, especially if they're just kind of more earthbound and they haven't, gone through the transition build process and two years to us is like three minutes to them the time doesn't translate so so he can very much still be very earthbound and and calling on you and being very attached to you energetically kind of see kind of being here through that space and and that's really kind of something that we don't work on in our culture is to help people transition like there's a whole thing that shamans do that that is a practice for that to help people transition so they don't get attached here um like i said it's kind of sucks that we don't do um, it yeah work. it was just you said also it was unexpected but it was unexpected to me but yeah it felt like yeah. it was something mm. yeah it was definitely unexpected to me um i mean we had known that you're really sensitive in the heart chakra and all that so anyway i hope that i mean does that answer your question um yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just have to fill into if, if we should do more about it or not. Yeah. 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 Just let, just kind of mm -hmm. let, let your body simmer into it. I mean, it's definitely good to acknowledge it and you may want to, you know, spend a specific meditative 
session kind of talking to him and you know can seeing how you feel about it and, and then we can just let me know if you want to talk about it more um, about you know that specific thing but to answer your question we we did as much as we possibly could to create space for you to, to you know just to let go of stuff in, in your heart chakra you spent a lot of time there and um this this whole <clears throat> this whole energy center and then dealing with that to the best of our ability in, in this in its time in the space that we had in the and with the the nature of the energy because we're dealing like I said with the soul connection and we didn't talk about it before and you know what I mean it was like oh we've got this going on and so that's what I was told like we just need to create space for her that's what's needed you know and so that's what we did okay yeah um and then you also uh, spent quite a bit of time in the head uh after I said in my early 20s I had this um um yeah, it was kind of an accident. I, I had like a, a drug thing, but I don't know what it was. So, it, you know, like it paralyzed one side of my head and the half of the side of my body. So, um, so that I felt a lot actually, although I like, I don't think much about it now, but you know, like it started to tingle. So it's probably some nerves and stuff that was starting to repair. Um, I also did the meditation just as I was waiting for you getting ready again. And I started to feel the same thing. Mm. Yeah. So, it, so that's the, um, that's like the, the infinite love light energy that comes in and just starts to work on healing stuff. And so that's why that's kind of the, like, if you're to have surgery, like if you're to have surgery, like say you get into a car accident and you need to have surgery on your, on your shoulder to repair it. I would go in after, as soon as I could, after the surgery and infuse it like directly, like what we did with in your heart, in your heart, what, what we would do there. And that would just like make it start healing and repairing. And it's just like, it's just energy, just working on, on healing. It just, it just does that. So it can even do that with something that happened years and years and years ago and, and just start working on it. The more that you focus on it, the more it's going to work because there's definitely trauma there for sure. It was like, it was, it was like, it was almost like if you can imagine like, I don't know, something close to like borax or something like that all up in there, like just really, um, uh, attacking. It was like, a like just this attack on the whole structure of like the nerves going on in there. And it just really shifted, um, like your it was such an event that it really like shifted your um your focus on st i mean it had there's no way it couldn't it was such a big thing you know what i mean like everything else was right yeah it was such a big and, and not only for me though like i i oh, just remember yeah. i came i came home and they were like <laughs> somebody's like you know what like uh, you have to you have to like um wake me up if you start to feel bad because I almost I almost died just before and I'm like what what are you talking about I'm just gonna sleep and then I just woke oh, up because and it I, wasn't just oh right 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 it wasn't yeah. uh, other people took that but yeah. what was it a drink or something it was meant to be a Mariana cake but I don't know I really don't like that was what it was meant to be but I think it was some it was an um jazz festival no it was like, definitely laced with something synthetic absolutely there's no doubt in my mind about it at there's yeah no it was doubt. terrible no and, doubt. yeah and actually many people had this experience that i had um i was probably the closest to dying um but you know oh, like yeah. i was yeah i was really like my heart almost stopped and i was sitting there holding their hand to somebody and i was just about to leave um my life just you know like everything but I was really like thinking this is too early um so I was really climbing onto not living um you're fighting it yeah yeah no it was definitely serious that's for sure I just I saw it like um kind of like an atomic bomb to the system yeah it, it was terrible and also like you know my energy I had like no energy afterwards and it was like really hard to I didn't sleep for two months after that um 
and one thing was anxiety, of course, you know, like I just got so anxious um, and I hadn't been before. Um, the other thing was actually that I was probably totally depleted by energy. Oh, you know, yeah. like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it took, asthma, it took over example. everything. It took over everything. It showed me that. It was like this thing just came in and annihilated her life. It took over every her inside her outside her everything like it, this i was just like trauma yeah. oh my god i think i said like there's a lot of trauma there's physical trauma but a lot of trauma there um yeah really serious so that's good that you're feeling because there still is um like repair to be done kind of thing and i and it was like all up in here um and then also to do with your pineal gland as well so it's supposed to be so if you're so if you're more sensitive to light or have you know pressure in your head or have a lot of like drainage going on or any of that stuff coming up in the next week or two um your pineal gland is very much that's your third eye so any that was it was all traumatized and um and shrunk and all that stuff and so with what we did, it'll start to repair all of all of that stuff. Um, we can always go back in again, but I like to keep. I like to give it a, a bit, you know, give it a bit. Mm. And I feel, yeah, like I said, like the nerve. You can feel the nerves are sort of working. Um, yeah, like a tingly feeling. Mm. Yeah, weird, huh? <laughs> Yeah, but I had, you know, like I had a lot of this, um, that's the feeling I had for a long time. Like, yeah. You know, like paralyzed, paralyzed, they checked me for stroke, it was in stroke, but it was definitely, you know, like, and one doctor said that, and this is, I also think that's true, that this drug was so strong, so it just paralyzed actually my, like, left side for three, four months, you know, like, also affecting my logical thinking, which wasn't very good, because I felt totally crazy for that time. Mm. When you what do you, when you say you felt totally crazy, what do you mean? Mm, I felt I wasn't sure what was reality or not. You know, like you like hallucinations or like seeing things or hearing things or. No, I think it was also because you know, like uh, um, I had had an experience that was like so unreal for me, uh, with also a lot of. Um, uh, you know like angels and things like that so I, I didn't know what to believe you know like you know like what is the real world and what is so I was totally confused for a long time now that my logical mind can like work again I, I see that as like okay that was that um, yeah well, it was not, it's well when we talk about your pineal gland and how there was trauma and things that happen it's also very possible that that you got like a really, 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 really high dose of a psychedelic. And, and that, and that particular drug does open up and, and it's like DMT and things like this. Um, it could be, it could have just been so extra super potent that, um, that you people, but people that take those types of drugs, they, it's basically, they do them so they can kind of cross over to the other side without, you know, having to die, but to connect in a spiritual way. So you seeing angels and all that, it's like, well, I could totally see that happening, but it could be like, just to a point of, of, because people can absolutely overdose on psychedelics and people have gone, you know, batshit crazy and never came back because they mm. go way too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What I would, There's I like, remember. we should go up to the window and look in, but you shouldn't be diving through, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and that's why I was afraid for, for a while, you know, like I, I because I was so aware too. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to end up in a mental hospital, but I'm not very insane right now. You know, like you are sort of very aware, but you're so crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 No, I get it. I get it. it's similar to. I mean, I, I've had experiences during my own awakening, and do I mean, imagine, imagine what the shit I see, man. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and there's been times where you just kind of like, okay. <laughs> like a lot of the time, like the, the joke about it is, is you're not really crazy because there's this, there's a bit of time where you start seeing, you start living in a different type of reality when you start mm. to, you know, spiritually kind of ascend and get connected with all this stuff mm. where you're like, okay, am I losing my shit? You know, because I'm not, I'm not a psychosis type of person. I'm not a, I, I, you know, for me, I've never, I've never been diagnosed with anything. I've never been on any mental medications. I've never had a psychiatrist. I've never had delusions. I'm not that person. But then when you start, I bet I've had spiritual experiences my entire life and been, you know, seen, been part of metaphysical things that other people couldn't explain. And, you know, so it's not like, so, but that's just my life, you know what I mean? But then when it gets to a different level and you're like, okay what <laughs> there's this whole there there is a whole if you look up like spiritual awakening and crazy or i'm not crazy it's like this whole joke about it because it's like you're i used to start every single one of my videos when i started my very first youtube channel with you're not you're not crazy <laughs> because <laughs> Yeah. Because so many people have that experience like am i crazy you lose time you get like you you're you're, you'll just go off and things that are not really there will get your attention and you'll like sit there looking off into nothing for hours at a time and you'll realize like what is happening you know like and it's because your perception has shifted and yeah. you're still in this reality but your perception has shifted and you're like in both places at once and you're questioning kind of so a lot of people don't like there's this kind of um period in time for people who kind of go through that there's this uh, kind of test and trial thing where are you going to kind of push through that anyway and and accept that they're really true they you know you're not crazy but they're really truly is things that we can be connected to that we can't tangibly see because there's too much evidence to support it even though it's unexplainable and I'm not a crazy person because there's proof. Like, I'm not crazy because you're the proof. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. my proof I'm not crazy. You, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. everybody else is, too. Yeah, because I, I like, the thing is that for me, that only lasted, you know, a certain time. I, but I think it lasted like, you know, two, three months, probably while this drug was still working. And I was oh, yeah. extremely telepathic, you know, like. Oh, I'm sure. I, I knew when people came. I like, you knew, like, yeah, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> so it was definitely connected to the drug. Yeah, that's your, yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it kind of just shows you like the potential there. Yeah. And, um, and that is, like I said, that's definitely something that's, that's, you know, you're meant to be a very telepathic psychic person. Your sensitivities with your heart, like you don't get one power without the other to help you out. You know what I'm saying? You just mm -hmm. got stunted. You like, you went from like growing into it to catapulting through it and then being bounced back. And then, you know what I mean? Like you have to kind of see it like that so you can get your equilibrium and then start out like start off like where you were when you were 20 and then just allow it to catch up and it probably will within the next year you'll be like holy shit i'm really psychic and telepathic because you've been able because you know we've done healing and you've been able to kind of get through this stuff and kind of and 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 with that it, just your awareness alone of it helps to heal it and to start make because that's really your antenna to the other side it's, a, it's such a huge part of of your psychic awareness and your spiritual connections and all of that not that you can't be spiritual without it but to really be able to have this like back and forth connection and and, and or not even just to like on the uh, you know with divine beings and your guides and guardians but also for practical help in your life it's helpful hmm. you know what i mean it's helpful to have these two things working for you because if it's just your heart chakra that's so sensitive and you're like oh i'm feeling it but you're but it's hard to connect 
with with the information that you're, you also get on this level with people because we connect energetically like that like when i feel into people and what's going on with them in their body i'm feeling it in my body exactly where they're feeling in theirs so we connect in that way and it's helpful to have like all of that information as best as you can. And it's just like any kind of other thing that you work out to get stronger with your body or your mind. You know what I mean? Like you learn a language or, or learn how to, you know, climb mountains or, or whatever, you know, it's just something that you have to put effort into and practice. And, and because that's when I said, there's like that responsibility there, it just kind of ends up being that, like you said, if I don't do this, I'm not okay. And that's just kind of what it is. It's the responsibility to take care of yourself so you can be okay. And the more you do that, the stronger you'll be on every level um, with this yeah. stuff. Because your body isn't like normal people. It just isn't. So, <laughs> so my leg. neither is mine. Like, so. <laughs> I have to isolate myself to be okay. So that's what I'm working on. Because I, I, of course, don't like to be isolated the whole time right so. yeah no I totally get it but it's just like I said it won't always be like that it's just you're gonna be really sensitive for for a bit here um so like I said just you know take the pressure off of yourself as much as you can you know um is would be the best advice when it comes to that like I know you have your responsibilities with your kid but when you're or your kids but when you're just like all right well you know, where then it's just not happening today. Then it's, you know, keep, it just has to not happen today. You know, just, yeah. And yeah. So, okay. So, um, anything else with, with that? Like we, um, we did, we, uh, the fit with anything going on up in here or how that you said it. It's especially the left side that I felt it and still feel it. Mm, but it was also the left side that felt affected. Mm. Right. That it, that got paralyzed, right? It was paralyzed for how long? That like paralyzed, it wasn't like, it wasn't a stroke paralyzed, but I felt it was paralyzed. Mm, at least two, three months. I felt it a lot. Like I remember I went jogging, which probably wasn't the best thing. Cause I was probably already so low in NG, but I just like, you know, like, wanted to get the feeling back yeah. on the right side. So the right side, I didn't feel anything. Like, that felt okay now, I think. Like, because it was also affecting the right side of my body. Gotcha. But, yeah. But it's, yeah, the left side of the head. So it was, like, the kind of feeling where it just feels, like, numb and tingly to you. That, yeah. But it's not like it was all tweaked out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I had that, too. I had a... a really big um very similar it was weird because it was on this side of my of my face was all tweaked out like this and numb but this side of my body was was not responding so it was both sides so when I went to the hospital they're like this is weird <laughs> usually I have a stroke on one side but I was like my face was like that and and my cognitive function like I sounded like, you know, somebody who has, you know, mental dysfunction, you know, like, um, I could think, but it wasn't coming out right to the point where, uh, the doctors asked my friend, like, is she always like this? <laughs> like, does she have, like, is she, you know, and she just, she lost it. She just, oh, no! and she just lost her, she lost it. Cause she was convinced I had a, I had a stroke and, but they were, they were confused because it was on both sides of my body. And, um, so it turned out that it was, even at the time they called it this, I used to suffer from migraines a lot, like my mm. whole life from the time I was like 15. And, uh, and I used to get ice pick headaches where all of a sudden it would, it would literally feel like somebody just stabbed you with an ice pick really fast, really sharp, really intense. Boom, 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 boom. Like that kind of thing. You're just like, whoa, you know? Um, and then those kind of, those went away, but I had these like a lot of different head. I've, I've probably had like 20 MRI scans in my brain. 
seriously. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, now it makes perfect sense given yeah. what, what goes out all up, but what goes, goes on in here. But all my life, there wasn't any ever any explanation to why my head would just, you know, do these insanely, this stuff, you know? Yeah. And, um, uh, so what, so they called them, they called it like these, uh, silent migraines or baby stroke. Like I didn't have an actual migraine, but for a couple days, like my eyes were really sensitive and my face did get numb and I was extra tired, even for fibromyalgia, like I was extra tired and I just didn't feel right. And then this whole thing happened, but I woke up in the middle of the night, just feeling this rush of energy from coming from the bottom all the way up and this explosion in my head. Just, and that's what resulted in this stroke thing, or wasn't a stroke thing, but my fish blood up. I, wo I was sleeping, I woke up to that. And I, and I passed out and I woke up at some point later on in the night and really having to pee. <laughs> I had to go to the bathroom really bad and I just remember waking up going, oh, I gotta pee. And then almost, and then not being able to, like got out of bed, but then as soon as my oh. feet like hit the floor, like I couldn't walk. And like, I barely like made it to like, hold on to something before I hit because I, of what had happened. And then I, pa you know what I mean? Like I didn't. <laughs> well, how long did this, this last though? Did it last for a long time or? It lasted. I was, my face was like that. My, my cognitive function was not well for like, and I couldn't speak normally for about a month. And then it slowly started to, to, get back to normal and I could walk and I could talk and I could and I wasn't numb and tingly and I was back to to what <laughs> to normal um but truly what it was was the whole kundalini thing and I didn't know anything about that at the time and so if you if yeah. you know about that yeah I know about the kundalini awakening and yeah yeah um, so that's what yeah, that was that was it, all and that can affect it like physically yeah yeah there are yeah. a lot of stories about people who got really jacked up physically from, and that's how I had to, you know, I was guided to all this information. This is years after it happened. And I was like, oh, so that's what it was. It's like, you know, and it's so ironic because there's people who really try to get that going and they work on it for their entire lives. And then there's oblivious ones like us who just wake up in the middle of the night to this going on. And it happened a couple of times. It wasn't just one event. It happened a couple of times. Um, and, and it was, you know, of course, all connected to the purpose of me being me, but I didn't know about that. Nobody, no doctor that I went to, no ER that I went to, no, nobody. Actually, like, yeah, because I'm a Kundalini yoga teacher, you know, so. Um, oh, so I didn't I did, know that. Yeah, so I do know about the Kundalini yoga. Good. The Kundalini energy, but I didn't actually know that it could like, so mentally I know, especially if you take drugs like I did that, you're not prepared, right? Um, but I didn't know that it physically could affect you. So that's very interesting. Mm. It's all neurological, you know, it's all, it's all neurological because it's all energy and it hits your, your pineal gland and your third eye. And it just yeah. explodes out of every little, little neurotransmitter in your brain. It just goes through your whole body. So it can mm. very much affect you physically. So yeah, you can Google it like Kundalini physical effects. Like if you, there's stories about, about this and that's how it, like, I was like, yeah, it's really intense. Mm. Really, really intense. Yeah. You told me that you're a yoga teacher, but I didn't know you were a Kundalini yoga teacher. <laughs> so you know, you know all about that business. Yeah. So see, and that in itself just shows how, how connected you are in that way. You know what I mean? Like that's just who you are. And, and those, those connections are, are supposed to be there for you. You know, I'm, I'm just, it, it excites me that to, to know that these, that all of the, like, it sucks that you went through that when you were so young and, and that, that was so traumatic, but you know, I, there's gotta be purpose in it. You know what I mean? At some level, at yeah. some level there's purpose in it. And, um, but now you're so, you're so far 
you know, you're so far from that. And, um, yeah, and who you knows? Know. Maybe who knows? Maybe it's like Spider Man. It made you extra psychic, and you just have to catch up to it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it. It was a really bad thing, and and also you know like with the, all the allergies and all this, I yeah. didn't have it before. It came then, uh, just over the night. You know, like just probably because it's so much toxic. Oh yeah, just oh, like yeah. that. Um, so I got you know like. Uh, asthma all this I didn't have it before it just came over the night but what was a bit good about like because then I think my body was just dealing with like you know um allergies and like stress that I didn't know about for so many years mm -hmm. my breath was really bad for so many years um until I got actually very sick again you know like 2011 and that's when I just simply took food allergy tests you know and just find out okay so it's because I'm, I can't eat this food. And then suddenly like a lot of my breathing problems helped a lot just by getting the, the food but, away that I, I didn't tolerate. So, Yeah, I can see for sure why you would go from not having allergies or asthma before that event to being super sensitive at because it just like, like a, it just was kind of like, lit everything on fire really and um your normal mechanisms of filtering and breathing and i mean that's just yeah so it's understandable that it would affect you like that of course which had to have been um in itself just because i kind of had the same the same thing when i when i got pregnant I didn't have any allergies my whole life and then I got pregnant and something about getting pregnant did something where all of a sudden I, I had allergies that I never had before during my pregnancy I was like what is going on I feel like I'm sick but I'm not sick and my my mother-in-law was like oh you have allergies I'm like I don't get allergies she's like well I don't know you're pregnant so maybe you do and I was like what it was the weirdest thing but yeah it was a thing it was a thing so I you know I can kind of relate to all of a sudden you know having but it wasn't nearly as bad as you know what you went through that was tra traumatic um but and how is that how is that now is that still are you still just as sensitive with your I don't mean after like with anything to do with what we did I just mean in general so much better after like n at least knowing what food I should have and not have um Interesting. and also I've been on a few detoxes you know um which definitely helps for allergies so I can tolerate more yeah. like for example milk I couldn't have at all now it doesn't matter if it's like, you know, a little bit or it's not that I drink milk, but you know, I could have some cheese or yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. I, um, I can do ice cream. It doesn't affect me like too bad. It kind of depends on the quality of the ice cream too. But if yeah. I have a milkshake with somebody putting milk in the milkshake, I can't do that. Yeah, no, I don't do I that. Do that. It upsets my stomach way too much, way yeah. too much. Because I just do like the plant-based stuff. I like. Have you tried oat, oat milk? Have you ever? Have you yeah, tried? I use oat, almond, rice. Like I just vary a bit. Mm. Yeah, me too. I do yeah. a little cocktail actually. Yeah. <laughs> I get one glass and I'll be like, okay, oat milk, almond, soy. <laughs> I just kind of make a little shake with my. Yeah, I, to vary it. I also think that. Yeah, I actually have had this thing happening to me that I get like hookups on. And so I'm allergic to the strangest kind of foods. Um, for example, I've been. Oh, yeah, that came up in your healing, too. Did it? Is yes. It? Yes. yes, I'm remembering now. Um, it was something about. Oh, you're going to have to go back and listen to it. Yeah, you, oh, you said something about like, but you, um, you said I, some kind of. Um, some kind of, um, what do you call it? Um, I just know the Norwegian word, but stivel, like starch. Um, yes. I was like, there's something that, that you don't eat all the time, but if you do it, it does affect you. There was something came up with that. And then, and, and there, there yeah. was, I remember that. So is that a thing? I think starch is a thing in general. I don't like, so that's why, you know, like, um, so I'm not a vegetarian, like I do it sometimes just to be like detoxifying a bit, right. but it's definitely like the, the low carb diet is probably what 
suits my body the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was definitely something. And then, but the, there was something, and I didn't know what it was. And I could, I wasn't, I, I don't know if I wasn't identifying it. There seemed to be, there was a certain something. Beetroot uh, is one thing. Huh? Beetroots is one thing. Okay. Like, Beetroots, um, yeah, but it's mostly because I, you know, like I love beetroot juice and I drank it for like <laughs> too much and then I couldn't have it anymore. But do so. you ever have, do you ever drink it just here and there? Uh, I haven't done it for, for like three, four years now. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure that that's it then. Um, yeah. Because do you get kind of periodic bouts of like blo of bloat or, or like just do you get that? I used to have it a lot as a child. Um, and that's also probably because I was sensitive to foods that I didn't know about. Right. Um, I had a lot of bloating as a child. Um, but that's not something that I, you... I can have it now, but it's not very often sometimes. Right. Because, right. cause, yeah, when you go back and listen to it, it was just, it was... And it, it may not, so if it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. Sometimes I pick up on stuff that maybe isn't a big deal, but it was something about something that you, that you eat, something. something that you eat or drink. I think it's more of an eat thing that it's not that often, but, and it, and it could be like a garnish. It could be something like on the side of when you eat something else that you wouldn't even pick up on it or something. I'm not really sure, but whenever you do eat it, it does like, a, it does either um, make you farty or bloaty or the bloaty without the farts or maybe even upset stomach a little bit, but it's not all the time. It just showed me this thing. It's like, there is something that that kind of comes kind of in waves a little bit, but if it's like not that big, thing, or do you think it was like one thing, or could it be like a group of things? Or it's no, it was more like it was more like something more specific. Okay. I think, yeah. yeah, but nothing that you eat that often. I'm not. Sh I'm. I, and I. I couldn't figure out exactly what it was. So, but anyway, that just, I'm sorry. I totally cut you off because I, I thought that's what you were talking about. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting. Like, so the stomach has at times been like a problem for me. Uh, but it's, and often if I'm under stress and stuff, but it's been pretty like cooperating the last year. So that's good. That is good. That is good. Um, okay. So did you have any other questions for me? I think not. No. Okay. Um, so we, so when we were in your, in, in that healing, okay. So let's just back, let's just back up a little bit. Was it like when you said it was different than anything else that you experienced, was there, what specific, was there anything specific about that? Just the way it felt or the way you felt after, or is there anything that you can elaborate on that about? I think the way it felt when like, I did it. And um, starting with like the, like the scanning part, cause we did, cause I do a scan. I kind of start at the head and we just kind of work our way down and I just start getting information. So at what, at what yeah. point did you start? Was it towards like the infinite love light healing part or? Cause it was, it, yeah, it was towards when you like you scanned and then you started to go back. Mm. To, yeah to that areas that you felt was mostly affected. Right, right. So okay, so that makes sense. It. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, I'm just curious. I'm just curious because the whole yeah. time we're connected, so I am like buzzing and tingling and all this stuff is going on in my body. So it's always curious. I'm like more than anything, like I'm curious and I think it helps other people too, you know, just try to try to um some, some people don't want to watch any of these interviews because they're like, I don't want to know anything. And I'm like, okay, you know, but some people, they really want to know as much as, as from other people as they can, because it is, it's different than, as far as I know, it's different than anything else. So, all right. So for me, and for me, it's always like, I'm curious as to how it feels on the other side, because I, because it's so, so weird for me because I feel my, I feel in my body 
and I'm getting information about your body. So the whole time I'm like super energetically tingly and all that is going on. It's just, it's just curious for me as to when that starts to really happen for the other person and it's different for different people so it's just it's just curious but that makes sense when you felt it because there really is i mean we're kind of activating stuff as we're paying attention as we're kind of going into the different spots with people that that can start to activate that but when we go back that's when um when we're doing the the infusion with the healing with the love light infusion i mean that's like the real deal stuff <laughs> it's like that is really really real deal like we're really really channeling through that energy like we prime your body we get it ready we get you connected and all that stuff so you can you know receive that energy and then it and then it comes down and it filters down into, into your body and it really starts to i mean i envision that is just this beautiful purpley copper golden sparkly energy light just making everything like taking any of the like the darkness away and just invigorating it just boom 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 and just kind of going through the entire body and doing that and pushing out as much negative energy from ev on a cellular level um so it's not just superficial it's just it's so it, it's so and it's so strong it's the highest vibration in creation so it's there's whatever is and but it's not going to it does it does as much as the body is able to deal with you know what i mean like it's so it's 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 so perfect in what it does that it won't it won't go too far ever it just does exactly what it's supposed to do where it's supposed to do it so if you have a space on your body where there's no trauma no nothing whatever it's just it, it's just going to go through and do that like like that laser light thing but if there's a problem there it's like going to gonna hit there and just go to work like super super hard as much as it can to take care of what's happening with it and then but it's all healing energy it's that's all that it is so it can't it literally cannot do harm you know <laughs> so it's just perfect in its in its in its form because it counterbalances the negative energy it's so much higher in vibration that it pushes it out and then the body takes on as much as that energy as it can handle and manage at the time so it can you know do what it needs to do so it is really um i've had people tell me like it feels like a soul hug because it's so much of that love energy it's pure love energy so that it's so like um uh it's such a deep thing you know to feel to feel that because it's not like a normal thing that you usually or feel like we get it in small doses you know what i mean it's love you know we get it in small doses here and there and we feel it as best to our ability but when it's so pure like that it's really intense <laughs> it's really intense and also like i already talked about the heart chakra which actually felt like painful or like that it was not pain pain you know like but just like that you know like things had yeah it was sure. just cool. sure. yeah it's like a pressure thing like a does it feel because to in my body it feels like um like when i was connecting with you i mean i could i feel so much of of what you're feeling and that's why i'm like you know saying the things that i'm saying but it really feels almost like a um, almost like an inside out, like if an elephant was going to like step on your chest and it's just like this pressure, um, but energy, but an energy pressure, it just, it, it, it literally like, and, but it feel, but you can feel it in the physical body. And that's why you're saying like hurts, but not like, like pain, but not pain because you, you really are feeling it, feeling it in the physical body. Um, I had one time I was doing, I was in person with a lady and I was, 
and I was doing a, um, a healing. Um, this is before I started doing, this is years ago when I just kind of started. And, uh, I was working on her and, and she has, she has a lot going on in her like different places in her body, a lot of like past surgery stuff for traumas and all sorts of stuff. But she was laying on her back and I was just like, what I was being guided to do is just kind of start from, from her heart, like her heart shock and kind of go down her body and just try to start moving energy out of her hand chakras and her feet chakras and just in general. And at one point we were coming down her chest from her belly. It distended about that high in a big old, like, 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 like tube kind of thing. It came up and it moved like that. And she was, she was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And I was like, that's the energy trying to move away from what we're doing. Literally. And it was moving, it was moving her body. You could see, and she's kind of overweight. So it, you could really kind of see it moving. <laughs> she was looking down and she's like, oh my God. I go, don't, I was just like, relax. Don't, you know, don't like bear down on it. Just let it, you know, breathe into it and stuff. And we, we did get it out. I got it to move all, I it was try, it was literally trying to move away from me. Um, so, so that's why we want to, like, when we start off, we're, we're getting, we're like literally telling the body, like, it's okay to let go of this energy because it, it does get used to holding on to it. And it's not, it's like a two way street, you know, the energy can't be there without the body consenting to it. So, so as soon as you, you know, consent to it, it makes it that much harder to, to let go of it. Once you, once you're like, no, I don't want this energy in my body. It makes it so much easier to let go. And, um, this is also why I can't just like willy nilly go around healing people without them being on board. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it takes a, it's, it's a little, it's more complicated than that. Um, and then, okay. Uh, oh, so you brought up your legs and you said we, you haven't, you know, really tested them out, but did, did your, cause there was definite, like not so much like, in a different way than your heart chakra and your, in this area, but it was similar in the, in the sense of like heavy energy. Like I did feel a lot of like held on, like, he, like stuck to you, heavy energy, um, well, pretty much everywhere, but in your legs, it was, and your knees, like your legs and your knees seem to be the most effective. Yeah, the knees actually, I put, like, that's why, like, if I could have talked at the time, I would have explained it. So I used to do a lot of, uh, you know, the telemark skiing, where you like, so it's a skiing technique where you bend your knees, like, very deep, and I did this a lot as young Okay. And it's so like you really like uh, for yeah. many years I had problems with my knees. Okay. I had reused them, but I don't really like feel this problem anymore. So that's good. Um, but yeah. it's probably still there. But yeah, yeah, because if yeah, I definitely felt that it was. Um, I guess a hot spot is the best way that I can describe it. Uh, is what the way I perceive it is like a hot spot on a person when it's mm -hmm. kind of like that's a point of like a pain point where energy. Anytime you've had any type of like trauma to the body, it becomes like a if you can imagine a piece of paper and you stick a hole in it. Well, the hole. So the body is so that your body is the paper. The hole is the trauma. And then any other time that anytime you have like negative energy about whatever in your life or just people, whatever dealing with, however you feel energy, that that puncture is always going to just like if you were to drop water on the piece of paper, it's going to go towards the hole. So it's mm -hmm. kind of the same thing when you have a, a hot spot, a trauma, and it could just be from overuse. It doesn't have to be it just, you know, like, like depending on the, the sport you're in is going to affect your body. Yeah, I did it for many, like while I was doing it. So this was, you know, like in my teenagers and twenties, I had like lots more knee problems than I, than I have now. Now, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, it was a thing. Mm. It was a thing. Gotcha. A thing. Um, yeah. and, and just because it was a thing, it can be something that is a thing. 
is what I'm saying. And, yeah. when it, and so hopefully now I'm um, like, when you get a chance to, you know, to, and I wouldn't push it too much, but I would just, I, I would think that, um, with what we did with pushing, you know, with doing the infinite love light and doing all the energy healing and stuff that a lot of that heaviness will have, will help you with your stamina, with your, you know, with your leg. Yes. Cause that one could be the, that it's not like you overall get tired. It's that your legs get tired. Right. Yeah. It can be the arms too, actually. When you're walking. No, but if I've done something physical, it's often in my arms, but I think that's to do with my, um, cause I had had a chiropractor and, um, like it's to do with my spine. I think so I carry like, so the position is just a bit wrong. Um, so when she did that, oh, then the pain in the arms went away. Um, Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. like, yeah, you have that, you just, your whole, like I said, your, your whole body is, is this like magnet for energy and, um, and so, yeah, that's kind of the thing of how it was, you know, when I had fibro, it was like, I, same thing, magnet for energy all up on me. I'm um, just sludgy shit energy. And it didn't take much effort for me to be exhausted and everything to feel heavy because it was so much on me. I had no idea, but there was so much on me. So, so it's, so I would think it'd be this very similar for you and why it, you know, your legs get tired after, you know, walking and not that five kilometers is that short either, but no, you know, you have to remember that for a while, I could only walk like 200 meters. So, you know, like I'm at, uh, yeah, or, you know, 300 meters, maybe like I, I was very, very sick for many years. So, so I'm at a total like different stage now, but still this is like, because I, the, the interesting is also that when I do it, I feel, I feel fine. Um, you know, like, so I could be like, yes, let's walk further. But then I just, I just have to like do with my head. I know, okay, now I walk for like half an hour, although I would like to walk like further. I just know I have to return. Otherwise I'm going to pay back tomorrow. So yeah, this, yeah. So yeah, that's exactly how it was very similar with fibro. It was like, okay, you know, gear up if I'm going to do these certain things that I'm, I'm going to have to act accordingly or deal with it. It was always pay for it later. That was the term pay for it later. You know, uh, that could have been like going to a party or being out late or traveling in a car for too long. It could, I mean, that could be a lot of things. It could be like, okay, we're going to go to the swap meet. I'm probably going to pay for it later. Like there was just things that took energy that made it so my body was going to react to, it was like an aftershock. Yeah. But what you like, so I've been careful testing it out today. I did so like some quite physical yoga, not very for very long, but that yeah. seemed to go okay. Um, so yeah, how much can I push it and test it out? Is should it be like a gradual thing or? No, I mean, as, as go, go is how you feel, you know, so you're, you're, however it feels to you, um, go with it. Um, mm. it's just more about the energies of other people, um, that, that is going to be more, you know, sent that you're going to be more, as far as your own physical stuff and what you feel that you can do physically, I would just go as, as you feel it, you know? Yeah. Cause that's what I haven't been able to do. Right. Like I feel like going longer, but I should stop now because otherwise I, mm. yeah. Yeah. So it, so that is, um, I mean, as long as your balance is okay, and I mean, how is your balance like the next day and stuff? Because some people they 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 lose so much energy and they're new. The, the it's like the energy we got rid of is way heavier and denser, and then the energy we put in is so much lighter that that literally I've had people come back to me and be like, I I had to kind of learn to walk again, like when I when I'm moving around and stuff because they just couldn't. They're okay, yeah. felt different. Um. I didn't test my but uh, test my balance, but I, I wasn't feeling different. No. Okay, your yeah. balance is probably pretty pretty good being a yoga instructor anyway. But but yeah, I've had people tell me that that um, that just moving around was something to get used to because of 
of what, you know, that whole thing. So as long as, you know, your balance is good and, and you're, you're not feeling too um, lightheaded or anything like that, because that could still go on for a couple of days. Um, as long as all that feels good, then yeah, go for it and just see how you feel. Get to that point where you're normally like, oh, maybe I should turn around and just kind of check in with your body and see what, see what it's telling you. But I would think that if, if it's not a thing about, um, this could also be something that you recognize, like, like we were talking about the, the pay it later may not come into effect at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, so the, then you'll be like, oh, okay, <laughs> there we go. You know what I mean? And, and so that you may want to just, you know, check in with that part of it first, do your normal thing and see how, and then base it against how you normally feel. And then that should, you know, that should answer some questions. Cause often it's been like, you know, I don't know how your feeling was, but it's been the feeling that you like, you just done a little physical thing and you feel your body felt like you've been running New York marathon or, you know, like, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can really, really identify with that. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and what's so weird is that that was my life for such a long time. And then going through all this stuff I went through, he, like healing myself and, and just everything, you know, being different, um, now my physical, my physicality, my strength, my, it's crazy. People are like, I cannot believe what you do. And I'm like, I know it's awesome because I never could do that stuff before. I had too much, too much stuff in my system yeah. to keep me from all of that. It's like, I always wanted to, but I, I couldn't And the simplest things, you know, on, on a bad day going up the stairs would just leave me like, forget about it. Or taking a shower was just like, you know, even though that's good for you, it'd be like, that is a lot of effort. You know, it was just like, so everything was just so tiring. Did you have um, this pretty much as a teenager as well, or? Um, it hit me. Well, I had different physical problems from the time I was about two, but, um, yeah. So like my whole life, I mean, I've, I've been what I am since I was born, but it actually manifesting and showing up as a physical problem was about when I was two. And then, but it, it, it was changing. You know how I mentioned the headaches, like that hit around when I was like 15 or 16. Before that, it was, uh, well, when I was like uh, nine, 10, 11, in that age, it was a lot of body pain and bone pain and um just burning in my just it felt like burning everywhere and they couldn't figure out what that was and then i went through different bouts of having stomach issues and really bad stomach problems like anything you could imagine through my lifetime that you could hit like the major points that you have problems with i basically went there for it but but the common denominator was aside from being diagnosed with fibromyalgia when I was 25, there was nothing ever physically found wrong with me, which was always really frustrating because it was like I was lying about it. But my symptoms were exactly what they would be and my reactions were exactly what they would be if you had that, but, the, but it wouldn't show up diagnostically. So... And then it, and then eventually it would kind of change and that would go away, you know, and then it would be some new thing. And it wasn't until after I had my son or when I, had, when I was pregnant with my son and after I had my son, that it was kind of a culmination of everything at the same time. And that's when it got really, really bad when I was about 25. And, um, and finally, well, no, 23. And then finally diagnosed when I was 25 with fibromyalgia, um, and if, you know, fit all that criteria to a T, my doctor said, you know, I was the most severe case she had ever seen. She'd never seen anybody that had it so bad and, and all that stuff. I was, I was on medication all the time, always from that point on, it was about anywhere between like six and seven, 10 medications daily, just to try to maintain all this business. And it was really, really, really bad, really bad. So, um, 
but it was all energy. It truly was all energy. And, and it's not to say that my body doesn't react in a physical way to energy or, you know, I don't feel things, but now I know why. And I can check in and go, is this me or is this somebody like I'll feel people that are walking by outside you know, and, or I'll be walking on the street and a lady will, and all of a sudden my hip will start hurting. And I'm like, Oh my God, what is happening? And then from behind me, a lady walks by and she's like 90 years old on a cane. And I'm like, well, there you go. You know? <laughs> so it just, it, it kind of is what it is now. I, because I know what is happening. I can very easily check in with that and just be like, oh, that's not me. And then I can cut off that energy. As soon as I identify, oh, that's that person, I can very easily cut that off. But there's times like I've been in, like we here in town, we have stores right next to each other. They share walls, right? I've been in this store and all of a sudden I've been hit with this wave of just tiredness and exhaustion and where I felt fine before. But the problem is, is that the hardware store is right next to the bar. And that bar is open early and people go in there and they're very low energy and they're alcoholics and have who knows what going on in there. And I will start they'll, just being in proximity to that building on either side. So if I go into the hardware store, if I go into the flower shop, I can get affected by the bar that's in the middle because of who and what is going on in there. So it's been like that my whole life. I just didn't realize it. To me, it was just like, I would just, you know, be fine and then be tired, be okay. And then all of a sudden my back was killing me or totally cool. And then my head was pounding, you know, it was just always just these random things that would happen. But for some reason it was after I had my son that it made me, or when I got pregnant, made me like ultra sensitive to everything. And from head to toe, all, huh? Also probably the hormone change, like huh. on yeah. Yeah. It was probably just a lot of stuff that had to do with it. It's a, you know, being pregnant and making a baby is pretty traumatic on a body in itself, you know? And, and, and I was so, I, I was just so, 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 so tired, like more than most people are when they're pregnant. Like I just was exhausted when I was pregnant and, um, but it was after that, like a lot of the physical stuff kind of like, happened at once and my doctor did say that it's kind of common for people with fibro to if they've had certain problems it kind of it or like even a car accident can set it off these like real traumatic energetic events mm -hmm. that like where you're like you're kind of set off in different places at different times and your body can kind of compensate energetically but when you have a big event it just all kind of comes into play I guess is the best this is the best way I can see it but what's cool is that I know from being on this side that and you know from being on your side too transcending the physical limitations that you've had and going from being really really sick to getting better with the different changes that you've made in your life um, that it is possible that we can, we can clear ourselves out and heal from, from, you know, things in our body that, that make us feel, you know, really bad and real pain and be really sick and all that stuff. And I hope that, I mean, the goal for the goal for us with you and doing this healing was, um, was for you to have more energy to get more, you know, just to be healthy in your, in your whole like heart you, with your asthma and your sensitivities and all that stuff that goes on in here, um, to release energy there just to get you at a neutral place so you can feel all this stuff better. Definitely have more energy. I think I said that already, but have more energy. Um, and or stamina, however, which way you want to put it. And then just get you as healthy as we could for right now with the whole COVID-19 thing, just to keep, just mm. to boost your immunity. I mean, that was, that's definitely part of it, you know, like, um, like you said, like couldn't hurt, <laughs> you know, there's, this, and you're absolutely right. And, um, Oh, and I wanted to, you know, I mean, so I could tell you too, I'm, um, I think I'd already told you that I had, 
set this thing up on my website for people who are sick, if they have COVID-19, that they can, uh, that I'm doing healings for that specifically. It's kind of like taking like this deep dive into like what we did with you and shortening that up into one session, just not nearly as deep, but to get somebody's um, chakra system um, flowing as best as we can and to infuse love light energy in it like in a overall kind of blast yeah. kind of way um and really depending on on what the person is going through but i'm also offering that for healthcare workers as well so um so anyway if you know of anybody or if you hear of anybody that works in the healthcare industry i know some a lot of those people don't believe in what i do but some of them do and um the idea with help with helping healthcare or doctors nurses anybody that's doing that is to keep them as healthy as possible because if they're in and around it and treating it there it it affects their energy and their immunity so as we know so the idea is to keep their keep them from getting and holding on to this energy and depleting their life force battery. It's about keeping them clear and, and as healthy as they can be while they deal with that. Cause that's really intense stuff that the people are doing. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, just wanted to let you know, it's also on my website too. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wanted to take a look and my website now is optimized for mobile. I don't know if you've been there recently, but this past week it got published and it's, it totally looks different. I don't know the last time you've been there, but it's, it looks different now. And you can look at it on your mobile even better. So, so finally did that. So that's pretty cool too. Um, okay. So let me think if there is anything else, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I guess, um, I guess like my, my last question is, like, would you, would you recommend this to other people that they do it? I mean, maybe not, maybe not your, you know, people that you know that are, that are really skeptical, but the people that are more open or whatever. Now, I'm not asking you to change anybody's mind. I'm just saying, if, you know, would you recommend this with, with other people going through just, I mean, I know you're just a couple days into it, you know, um, but. Yeah, actually, you should interview me again in one month also because it's because i'm like really um really like interested to see what's gonna happen because i think it's just like you know i felt this is just pushing a sort of start button yeah uh, but absolutely i can recommend it yeah oh great but i'm also cute yeah as i say i'm very curious of how it will lead me in me too and well that's you know what it's it's really cool because I've seen people transform in so many, you know, it kind of like wakes them up. It kind of gets them, you know, more active or more creative or more spiritual or all of the above and their physicalities and just things, just the shifts and changes that happen in their life after this um, is always just really like inspiring and, and, and like, it's always life changing for them in different ways. And, and I, I just, feel so grateful to always be even a little bit of it to be a part of that. Just totally like, I love it because it's always for the better, you know, it's always, it's always for the better. And, um, and I would love that. I would love to get together. Like, do you want to make an appointment in a month and just have it set that we be talking a month? Yeah. So actually that would be like interesting. Mm. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. Let's yeah. do that. And of course, if you, if you need me before then, please yeah. send me yeah. an email, reach out, you know, I'm always here and we can talk yeah. again. Or set no, but like, I, I'm very interested to see what's like, what's going to happen. Cause you know, like I, this awareness with like other people's energy and all that, it's just like all, although I've been aware of it, like now it's like very different. Um, so that's something I think I have to learn how to deal with. Um, it's also that I'm now curious how it will be to test out different physical things, you know, mm -hmm. like slowly starting to do that more. So I will probably have a much better picture on how things are after one month. Yeah, definitely. And you know, we never actually addressed this, but you, you came to me as a diagnosed chronic fatigue person. Yeah, I mean, um, and 
And while, you know, we, we just, we never really, I mean, we did address it in the beginning, but we addressed it more as this whole energy thing and this heart shot, you know, we kind of just went, yeah, that's true. But, you know, it's kind of like with me and my fibro, it's like, yeah, that's true. But <laughs> it's like, so the, so the, the effects of dealing with the energy stuff is, you know, the idea, like I said before, is definitely helping you with all this stuff. But, 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 but yeah, like you said, it, it's, the idea is to, to restore, to get you more to a, a place where you can count on having more energy and more stamina and not just because you're the effect of clearing you out and having, you know, a, 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 a neutral baseline to your energy. So you can, like you said, you're going to have to, you know, figure that out. There's always, again, you know, the practices that you do to keep you energetically, you know, stable meditation, all the stuff that we talked about. Um, definitely working on, um, shielding on like meditations for shielding. We did what we did that for you in the healing with your own energy and everything, but that's something that needs to be maintained. By yeah, that's, that's something um, that I probably have known that I should do, but it's pretty new to me. Um, so yeah, that's something I have to like jump into. I think it's yeah. Important. And again, that's, that's a, um, that's a, it's a simple practice. There are guided meditations for those. It's another one that I need to do for, for, for my, just to have in like a library for people. I just haven't done it yet, but there are lots of those. I do have like, that's not true. I do actually have one on my, yeah, that's not true. It's kind of a longer one, but that would be one, that would be a good one to do like maybe once a week, but there are shorter ones that you can do. But the one that I have on my YouTube channel is maybe like 20, 25 minutes. It's a 20, 25 minute practice for shielding. It's a really, really good one. Um, and so it's not something you need to do all the time, like every single day. But it's also good to like have to that. It? What? Is it easy to find it? Is it called some um, like meditation for shielding or something? Um, or? I'll find it and I'll send it to you. I'll find it and I'll send it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure if you go on my channel and you, um, and I'll put it, once I post this, I'll, I'll put the link to it too. But, um, but yeah, it's something about like, um, shielding and grounding. If you were to put the, those two things in the, in the search on my YouTube channel, I should also put that on my website. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really good one. It's about 20, 25 minutes long. Uh, but then you can also do searches for like, for other ones, because it is a good idea. Let's say like, you're going to go to the market you're not going to sit there and do a 30 minute meditation, you know? So you could just sit there for, you know, five minutes and really kind of reactivate your sheet. It's like, again, it's about intention. Like, cause I'll even do it too. I'll just like willy nilly go about my day and then I'll be out getting affected by energies. And then I'll be reminded, well, you didn't take your five minutes to like get in with what you're doing. It's kind of like, you know, stepping into your spacesuit before you go into a place without any oxygen we have to kind of just get into the habit of doing it and, mm -hmm. and it really is about retraining our brain in certain ways so 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 those so yeah i would definitely recommend that but i will find the video for you and i will um send that to you because that's something you should you should definitely do um and then aside from that it's it's just the maintenance of of all the other things that you already do and if anything like i said just Right now, um, while you're acclimating to everything going on, your body's still like really actively healing. Um, more water and again, the baths and the showers and stuff like that will really help as well. Um, more than you know, it's just it's unbelievable how much that helps. Um, and I think that's that's it. But if anything else comes up, and I want to thank you for doing this um, publicly, I appreciate that. So other people can take a look at this, and I'm so glad that that um uh that we did this that we did this for you that you were guided to me and that we we uh had this experience together this is always like i love doing this for people because i know that it helps them but it, I'm, i know i'd be a total liar if i didn't say it how it makes me feel really good too so yeah, um like i feel very confident that you know what you're doing that i awesome. felt that, so Thank you Thank so you much. much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've, I've worked really hard. <laughs> I've worked really hard to get here and to, um, to, to build something that, that is, um, you know, 
uh, really substantial for people. You know what I mean? Like, and I didn't have a person, a teacher to tell, you know, it's just all figuring it out, you know, and, 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 and going with it. And, and the proof is, you know, the results, you know, it's like, that's what I say to my skeptic people come around, you know, who are skeptical. I'm like, well, here's the thing. I've got real results with people. So, you know, it's not just me talking, you know, there's people with results and, and I'm excited that you feel it, you know, feel different, feel, you know, it working like on a, on a energetic side on a, you know, etheric psychic side or tell, you know, all that stuff. But I do, I definitely do want to know more and more about how it feels physically for you. So, um, so I will send you a, uh, two things, I'll send you an email with a, a calendar event for a month from now. And then also that, uh, that meditation. You're welcome. All right, honey. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's been a pleasure, 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 pleasure working with you and getting to know you. And um, if there's ever anything I can do before I talk to you again, please reach out, okay? Yeah, I will. Okay. okay. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Bye, honey. Bye. Bye.